What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're working on our 6.0 power stroke engine for our F350 project. I got the rotating assembly all laid out. This is what I like to do when I, before I get started on the assembling the engine, just get everything laid out, get it organized. Um, I like to set everything up by the cylinders that they're going to go to. That way, as we start specking everything out as far as bearings and rings and whatnot, we keep it all in order. Moving on to the block over here. Uh, we're going to do something that I, uh, I don't always do, but on this block, we're definitely going to do. I got this little uh, dingleberry hone that we're going to hone out the lifter bores with. Now, we're not trying to like enlarge the holes or do anything crazy. Uh, just trying to kind of deburr like the oil galleys. There's a, if you ever like stick your finger in there, you can kind of feel just a slightest bit of uh, like a little bit of a burr from the casting. So just clean that up, especially uh, I believe this one or the other one was uh, we had a stuck lifter in there. So just kind of clean it up real quick. Then we'll take it outside and wash it all up. Uh, you've seen me do that a few times on the channel. So and the goal for today is to spec out basically everything we see here. Uh, check our piston to wall clearance, get our ring set up. Well, then we're going to check our rod bearing clearance and let's see uh, if I feel like doing the mains today. But anyways, guys, uh, let's get to it. All right. So to get started, I got the hone on my drill and uh, using a little bit of ATF is lubricant. Uh, you can use motor oil, whatever, but I like uh, ATF and just hone it as you would like a cylinder. Keep your... Um, your hone straight to the bore itself because you don't want to get off center and actually kind of enlarge the hole in one way or another. Like I said, all we're really doing is we just want to clean up. There's a little bit of rust that just got, because I think it got left outside or something um, in the board. So just kind of cleaning that up and deburn a little bit, but we're not trying to enlarge the hole. We're not changing clearance or nothing like that. So we're not going to go crazy. We're just going to clean it up and make sure we don't have any issues down the road. And we're just gonna check, see what we see, see if we like what we see. And then we will just rinse and repeat for the rest of the uh, boards. All right, so like I said, we're not going to try to change the size of the bore. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus up a little bit. Let's see if you guys can see that. You know, we're just looking for a nice clean bore. Uh, just provide good lubrication to the lifters because that is a common failure point. So get you guys still because that is a common failure point on these 6.0 engines. Now I'm just gonna do the other side here and then we'll get this engine out and washed up and then we'll get it back in here and start specking everything out. cut off because I ran out of uh, space on the phone I got to clear it up uh, but anyway 
basically cleaned it all up and like usual aired it all out got all the water out and then shot it full of uh, WD-40 to keep it nice and looped up so now we're ready to take it inside and start on the uh, assembly days I ended up not getting the uh, as much done on Sunday as I wanted to but anyway basically we got everything specced out we got our rods set up uh, with the bearings we got the main specced out we got the piston wall specced out everything looks good and I even got it painted check out that color I decided to go with a tan uh, I think it'll look really cool uh, really sharp it'll be kind of basically tan um, black and then like the basic silver like I'm not gonna paint the rear cover or the front cover uh, So I think it'll look really good. But uh, anyway Now we're gonna go ahead and start assembling everything I found a good cam that I had laying around got all my J jets cleaned out made sure they're flowing You've got to make sure you check that these are flowing. Uh, these are crucial to keeping the pistons cool if these pistons overheat they're gonna swell up in the cylinder bar and that's when you're gonna get a seized, uh, seized engine. So make sure you check these. Any brand, any engine, if they have cooling J jets, check that they flow. I have had a couple that I've checked that do not flow. So yeah, definitely check that out. Otherwise, time to get uh, pistons on rods, rods on crank, crank and block and get a short block together here shortly. All right, so as you can see, we got our front and rear oil galley plugs installed. I just get the Motocraft ones. Anytime we tear down an engine like this, we're gonna pull those out, we're gonna clean them up. Um, we use, like I said, the OEM plugs and some Loctite 620. Find that to be the best, I just gotta get some more of it. And then we got our camshaft in, OEM camshaft, nothing special, all looped up. And we got our oil squirters in. Um, Again, guys, make sure you check them out. We got the bolts Loctite, red Loctite in, 10 foot pounds. 
uh, main bearings of course lubed up then we got our camshaft in again red loctite uh, so like i said one thing i learned on the 6.7 motor is red loctite the world it doesn't really make it hard to tear apart and you know none of the bolts come loose so it's a win-win but anyway moving on now we're about to set the crankshaft into the block i want to show you guys a special tool that you need to have now this is not the oem tool or the oem branded or even a fancy one this is actually a knockoff like you know chinese amazon brand um the only issue we've had with it was that these dowels had to be ground down to fit in where they got to fit in so So basically what you're going to do is you see there's two dowels on the camshaft gear. They line up with these two dowels, right? And then you got this bolt hole lines up. Lines up with your bolt. So I'm going to get it put on and we'll be right back. All right. So this is what it looks like all set up and basically what it's doing is it's gonna match the cam to it's gonna match the cam to the crank. See that little dowel there? That's gonna set it all in time. Uh, basically, you can't see the gears to see the timing marks on the crankshaft because of that rear dowel uh, dampener, and you don't want to pull that off. So you use this tool to line it all up. Like I said, the OEM tool or the OEM branded whatever is super expensive. I, we just got this off-brand one. This is actually Trevor's. I'll get a shop one for us, but uh, yeah, works just as good, so. Now we'll go ahead and get the crank set in, and then we can start slamming in the uh, rotating assembly. All right, so see, you've seen, you preferably want to use two people to get it in. And now if you see what it's lining up basically is these two dowels. This one dowel needs to be lined up with the hole in the block. Kind of hard to see it, but there's a hole right there in the block. This goes straight through to that. And then all lines up with this dowel here. So crank and cam are in time now. Now we'll get the bed plate on and continue on so we got the main girdle on torque to spec oil on the bolts all new oem bolts um they are uh, they are reusable i guess but i always like to just put new ones in very cheap insurance uh, one thing i forgot to cover was you see i got some rtv silicone basically what i'm doing is imagine uh this line right here is the groove for the gasket that goes in the bed plate in between the block and the bed plate right on the outside I'm gonna lay just a very fine, thin bead of RTV silicone because this gasket here is prone to leaking. Um, it's one of the most annoying leaks because it requires the whole engine to come out uh, in order to fix. So I've started doing this a few years back, just putting a thin bead of gray, seems to work great. I've never tried black, I'm sure it'll work, but I'm just gonna stick with what has worked for me and the gray works great. Um, since I've done this, I've had zero comebacks on bed plates. So if you don't agree with it, oh well, this is what I like to do. Um, I also do the same thing. You'll see me do it on the windage tray and the oil pan, the rear cover and the oil uh, pump cover, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead, put the uh, pistons and rods together. Pretty simple, you got the uh, pistons and they got the cam side marked up for you. And then what you're going to want to do is put the long end of the rod. Focus up. What you want to do is put the long end of the rod towards the camshaft. So the long end will be basically 
on the inside here. So let's get to it. All right, well, I'm sorry, guys. I tried recording assembling the uh, pistons and rods, but I uh, forgot to hit record. So just imagine that you guys got to watch it. But uh, basically, like I said, um, long end of the rod is going to go on the cam side, which is also the pistons quarter side. And of course, you want to make sure you, biggest thing is make sure you keep your rod caps with your rods because they're, as you can see, they're not, oh, maybe you can see, look at that one. They're not perfectly machined. They're actually made in one piece and then split in half. So if you mix them up, you're going to have a bad time. Um, also went ahead, got the rings on. Can you focus? Come on. Got the rings on. So now got the bearings lubed, the rod caps lubed, everything ready to go. So now we can start slamming the pistons in the block. And just like that, we have a short block, boys. So we got the pistons in, got the rod bolts torqued, cams in, moving right along, looking good. So now we start assembling. We got to put our lifters in. We got to get our H-pop together. We got to put our oil cooler together. We got our front cover to go together, our oil pump, our windage tray, our oil pickup, our oil pan, rear cover, rear main seal, and then obviously heads and everything like that. So. Got a lot of work ahead of us, boys, but hey, big milestone right here. Was that some hard work there, Tatum? Huh? Must be nice. Just got to lay down all your life, huh? All right, so we're back in the shop. You guys can see I got the oil pan, the windage tray, bed plate all on. And like I told you guys before, I used a little bit of uh, gray silicone on the outer edge on both the windage tray and the... Uh, oil pan uh, of course we got a oil pickup tube installed with an o-ring red loctite red loctite on all these bolts red loctite on all the oil pan bolts and now we're gonna go ahead and get the front cover on we got the new OEM front cover like I said these are a hot commodity right now so this is the only one that I could get my hands on lately anyway um, we also got some RTV out because what you want to do is right here where this is the bed plate seal that comes through from the side and comes up and it meets with the front cover basically. Uh, right here is where it goes on the gasket. I always like to put a little bit of gray RTV, just kind of, not too much, just a dab, just to kind of seal up this area, uh, give an extra seal once you put the front cover on. Um, as far as that goes, the uh, procedures Pretty standard, uh, clean up your gasket surface, put the gasket on, and then we're gonna put the front cover on, and then I'll show you guys what I'm doing there and how I like to put it all together. All right, so got it all on. Um, big thing is I just left the bolts kind of loose, uh, not trying to keep it tight, because I wanna get the oil pump in here. Um, for the most part, the Front cover has got the dowels to center it, but I like to leave it a little loose. That way you can, one, make it easier to get the oil pump in, and two, I don't want any sort of binding. Also, that's where, bro, that's where this Lucas assembly lube comes in as well. I really like this stuff. For this application especially, I'm just gonna put some in here, and then, kinda weird doing it with one hand, but, Kind of spread it around. Now, mainly because this stuff is like pretty thick, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the gears on the outer part of that gear and the inner part of the gear as well. And because it's so sticky, it'll help with the initial fire up of, or the initial priming uh, when we're just dry cranking it trying to get oil pressure because it'll be uh, sticky and giving some suction to the oil pump to get the, uh, the suction going. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I can't really do that with one hand and then we'll be right back. All right, now we got the gears in and now we'll go ahead and do the torque sequence on the front cover. Again, I just leave it a little loose. Usually it's not a problem, but leave it a little loose. That way I can get the gear in because the tolerances are pretty tight. Um, I don't want any binding and I just wanna make it easier for me to install the gear. And then, like I said, we're gonna use that Lucas assembly lube. I'll put a little more on before we put the uh, oil pump cover on but we also have to get the v 
these covers come empty, so we have to put the uh, oil pressure regulator, um, everything in as well. So I'm gonna torque all this down. I'll get the uh, front cover, uh, the oil cover on. And then I wanna show you guys the special tool and how I install the front main seal. And it's similar to how we're gonna go ahead and install the rear main seal as well. All right, so we got our OEM front main seal. I'm just gonna set that over here real quick. But like I said, I got a fancy tool here. This is a uh, seal installer. Now, it only works for 6.0, but, and we have them for different brands like Duramax, uh, everything like that. Unfortunately, they're not universal, but if you're doing a lot of uh, service like we do with these trucks, highly recommend use, or getting one of these. Um, sets the exact depth perfect every time. You don't have to worry about them being off center. Go ahead. Tighten it down, nothing crazy, just basically hand tight. Want to allow some movement, a little bit. And now we got our OEM front main seal. And anytime we have, uh, it's got a retainer. Anytime we have a retainer that doesn't have anything on the inside, I want to go ahead and put some Loctite 620, just like we do with the freeze plugs. just so we're not getting any oil leaks from a metal to metal seal. Now we're just gonna slide this over like this, put our the other end of the tool in, and I'm sure you guys can see exactly how this is gonna work. We're gonna tighten down this bolt or this nut and drive the seal in. And the cool thing about it, like I said, it's going to drive it in exactly where it needs to go. Not too far, not too deep, not off center. So like I said about this tool is it's going to drive the seal in to the exact depth and you're not going to have to worry about it being off center. Look at that perfect seat. Now for the lifters, I have OEM Motocraft lifters like I showed you guys in the first video. Just going to get them looped up a little bit and slide them in. Now some people like to pre-lube them, some don't. Um, I was taught not to pre-lube them, so that's how I do it. And by pre-lubing, I mean put them in like a bath of oil, letting them sit overnight or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is how I do it, and it hasn't failed me. So one of those things I think you just kind of have to go with what works best for you. Now the reason you need to put the lifters in before the rear cover is because you need to put the branch tube in. That's what holds the um, retainer for the rear uh, eight lifters on both sides. So I've done it before where I've forgotten to put the um, branch tube in and I put the rear cover on and then that just sucks because it just wastes time. So try to learn from my mistakes and don't do that. Make sure all your lifters are centered up right and then get your uh, retainer on. And that's why I like buying the OEM lifter kits because they come with new, uh, new lifter retainers. So good peace of mind. It's like I said before, as these trucks are getting older, you know, new things are failing. Um, you know, these lifter trays are just made out of plastic. So as they get older, they're gonna get worn out and we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we replace those. All right, so I got the branch tube installed. Um, well, I gotta bolt it in. One thing I wanna note is I did forget this uh, uh, oil galley plug and 
you definitely want to try not to forget that before you put the cam gear in because it was kind of a, a bear to get in. I had to, because you can't get directly at it, so it's kind of an angle. So it's kind of difficult because you have to make sure, of course, that your plug goes in straight. So just be wary of that. Again, learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them. And this is another spot where we're going to go ahead and use some red Loctite because we do not want this coming loose. Torque to 10 foot pounds. All right, now we can work on the rear cover. You guys can see I didn't worry about putting the front uh, lifters in just yet because that's not in our way. So we'll get the motor flipped up to the top and get working on the rear cover. Now, just like the front cover where the bed plate comes through, we want to go ahead and put a little bit of silicone on there. And you guys just seen, I like to do the same thing I do with the bed plate, uh, the bed plate, the windage tray and the oil pan is put a little bit of uh, RTV around the gasket on the rear cover as well. All right, now just like the front, I have a fancy dancy seal installing tool. Again, we're just gonna go ahead and hand tighten the bolts. Don't need them to be super tight. You want this to be able to move just that little bit to let that seal go on. Now, unlike the front seal, we're not gonna apply any green Loctite because as you guys can see, it kinda already comes with a sealant um, with the OEM seal like this is. Uh, the Molly ones will come and they won't have, uh, they won't have the, uh, any sort of uh, like Loctite in the middle there. And you guys have seen I pulled out this plastic piece Make sure you do that, don't forget, because that's actually for the tool. It goes here, you guys can see, we actually just usually leave one in there, but uh, I will. Pop this out to show you guys. You actually wanna put this tool in here and just like the front, Put the tool on, bearing, nut. Can't find the right size wrench, so pliers the next best thing. And just like before, we just want it to go in nice and smooth. And once it bottoms out, that's it. Just like that. You guys can see it sits perfectly flush. 
exactly where it should be. So again, great tool to have, highly recommend if you guys are doing a lot of uh, these types of services. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up here. Hopefully you liked what you've seen. We took this uh, block from a uh, bare block to a complete assembled short block, spec'd everything out. Um, got the front and rear covers on, oil pan, everything together. So basically the next step and the next video we'll do on this series will be sticking the uh, short block in the truck and then we'll start putting heads on and everything like that. I uh, just find it easier to do it in the truck versus on the bench. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, anything you want to see in a future video, something like that, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. And if you guys haven't already, please subscribe and share with your friends. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.